I think it's really important to understand like how our narrative starts, even our theological narrative. We can read the Bible as um, starting either at Genesis 3 or starting at Genesis 1. And when you start at Genesis 3, you feel like that's the beginning, and we, we start um, with an, even just with the narrative of sin. It's almost like Genesis 1 and 2 is kind of like the prequel before the real thing. But if you actually read Genesis uh, 1, you don't get that far and realize all people have made the image and likeness of God. And you see the be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth. There, another way of saying that is to create culture. When you see the things that God tells uh, uh, Adam to do in a garden, uh, to till and to keep the garden, that's um, another way of cultivating culture. And even uh, um, naming the animals is also naming culture. So what's really important to understand in ethnicity is um, what Andy Crouch says. He says it's, it's, it's uh, what we make sense of the world and what we make of the world. So when you take that just from a Genesis 1 and 2 uh, theological understanding, how we make sense of the world and what we make of the materials that God gives us matters. It matters like what we embody and who we embody. It matters that you're male, it matters that you're female, it matters what ethnicity you come from, it matters uh, uh, what socioeconomic space you come from, because there's something locked in of your expression that reflects the image and likeness of God. So in many ways, we can't even fully understand who God is unless we have a multi-ethnic, multicultural, socioeconomically diverse, um, diverse genders expression uh, of, of understanding who God is. Well, like Jarvis said, Genesis 3 happened and things got really complicated and messy. And oppression began to uh, enter in the world. I think it's really important that we understand that God's people, like Ab God made a um, promise to Abraham that he'll take his son and make his son to a great sea into a great nation so they can be a blessing to other nations. And so God's people are called to be a blessing to other nations. We aren't supposed to be nationalistic. We're supposed to be a blessing to other nations. And we're supposed to uh, uh, honor and, and not to be concerned only about ours, but of others. And what's fascinating is, is that God did not fulfill that promise in Genesis. He filled that promise in Exodus. He made them in a great nation when there was a pharaoh that did not know Joseph. So they weren't at the top of the empire. They were at the foot of the empire. And God formed his people under oppression. And all throughout the Old Testament, he says, remember, you were once oppressed. You were once slave. And so don't take the ways of the empire into the promised land. Well, when you look at people, we oftentimes want to oppress one another. And really, it's oftentimes for economic gain. And that's what we exported and it happened here in the United States, where it wasn't like Europeans just woke up one day and said, hey, we hate Africans. But what happened, it was the idol of greed that, that, that took over. And they began to uh, justify you, because in a Christian context with people that just have read the Bible, you can't enslave human beings. You got to enslave savages. And you got to enslave uh, uh, people that are animals. And so they began to justify this. And this is when we began to make a separation between a spiritual salvation and a physical salvation in order to justify the economics that was happening. And now, in many ways, when you hear people talk about, uh, uh, we began to talk about issues of like your humanity and race and justice, we've inherited a theology where you can separate your gospel can be both spiritual and not have uh, any kind of physical manifestation. And so this is a theology that we've inherited there's an a, a economic oppression that's going on for hundreds of years, and this is this mess that we've inherited. And, and so when we talk about racial and ethnic hostility, it's, it's important to understand that it's the enemy. So, um, I won't pull it out now, but in Ephesians 6, I think 14 or 15, it says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but they're principalities. Well, the principality in this land is white supremacy. 